All right, this is really amazing. This goes way, way, way back when I first got out of the Army. <clears throat> I was in the Army I'm working on Nike Hercules missiles in 1968. I got out and tried to go right into physics, and I found out that they couldn't understand that the transfer of energy is from light to atomic vapor. Now, that atomic vapor is this. This is it. That's an electron. Electrons are half of a photon, back to back. And there's nothing more than a little bar magnet. It's basically all it is. You put two of them together, they bounce off of something. Just one of them will go and burn right into something. If you collect enough excesses of these, they just go flowing through. That's called heat. It moves through. And if you get too much of them, they just you get lightning. And it will absorb into the ground because the ground is more dark matter much more dark matter than the, the excessive white matter. The white matter basically coats the earth more than the dark matter. And, and I can show you they can separate them. We have separated them. Now, what does this tell us about the weight of things? Do these have a weight? They absolutely do. And the more you put them together, they create f protons. And the more protons, it's just the more weight. And here it's talking about right here. I used to calibrate scales, too. And we, I'll tell you the story about that. I was deep into uh, to electronics, I, you know, and I had my own business for the rest of my life. And we had a very, very slick system. But anyway, this just came out in May of 2022. They're talking about is temperature really important during calibration? You have to calibrate scales. So if you go into the grocery store, you should see a seal on that scale that says calibrated and a date and who did it. Something like that. And what they do, or what we did, you go in with these certified weights that say, I, when I put this one pound weight on there, it's going to weigh one pound. So you put it on there and then in the calibration mode, which is a special mode, and it had heat, we had lead seals that had our own stamper on I got some around here somewhere. And we used to stamp them and seal them. And then it, nobody could get in there to change it because there was a, a, a secret little passage in there that you had to have. Hold on a second. When I say I was deep into this, I was deep into it. This was my own stamp for, for the lead seals for the scales. Uh, and what you do is, you after you tighten down the, the secure plate that made sure nobody could get into the adjustments, then you'd put this through the, the holes. There's a little hole. <laughs> There's a hole in the, in the nut, so you could not turn the nut. Once you put it around like this, and then you seal it together, like that, tighten it up real nice and tight so that, that nobody could tight, you know, could get into this. You try to back that out of there, there's no way you can get it to the plate. And then we'd have to seal this with the... Boy, I haven't done this in a long time. There it is. BM, Business Machines. And that was our certified number, two something. We used to make all our own connectors for the Cat5 connectors and all kinds of stuff. I go back right to the earliest days of this, and I mean seriously, the earliest days. All right, as you know, I am extremely vocal and I am extremely prolific at putting out videos. And I, it's very interesting. This just came out, oh, I don't know, a few days ago, in 2022, May of 2022. and. I've been talking about this quite a bit. What about temperature? Can it cause outcome in a calibration? Yes, it can. And I related my stories about this. And I'm seeing now there's a lot about new physics, which is exactly what you have to have in order to justify anything. They don't even know what gravity is. At our top universities, they don't know if light is a particle or a wave or what it is. They think space is a vacuum. There's no particles out there. Light is a particle. I've shown it. They don't just stop when they go through the air. They have to get from the sun to here. What do you think's coming? They think it's some kind of nothing that's a wave. 
and there's nothing there. Well, that's obviously not correct. It's pushing and it's shoving. And that's why the Hubble Space Telescope it has no idea where they are in space. Because space is dense in some areas and not so dense in others. Light is slowing down because it's pushing and shoving. All right, they just refitted the Large Hadron Collider to start putting out some stuff. And this was just a, you know, a few weeks ago, too. And they're showing all this work they did to it to focus it. See how it's coming down into a focus? That's all they did is make it focus. The hunt for new physics is back on. Well, it took them three years to make this down. But they're trying to hit head-on things that are gigantic. We're using light, and we can do it all day long. We don't have to hit them on for a second or two. All right, higher energy, more data. As far as I understand, the only thing they did was focus it to make them focus head-on instead of just passing the beams by each other hoping for the best. They squirted them down just like we did, only we're using light. Now, they say the more energetic smashes should increase the chances that collisions will create particles in the high energy regions where some theories suggest new physics could lie. Yes, absolutely they do. Alright, I got interrupted, so I'm sure I've shown you this a thousand times or more, but probably another will be coming up. These are the particles that we're talking about, um, and this is the light accelerating. And these are the fission and fusion of the black and white particles, which were fused together here. But we're using light. They're using protons hitting head-on, gigantic particles, and then spewing things everywhere, looking for these particles. We're literally squirting them like a hose, exactly like a hose. We do this all day long. And we need to discover what kind of different materials to squirt it through to give a different outcome. But this is extremely high energy. That's much more energy than it started with, quite obviously. Just to make it perfectly clear, this light was just traveling in a nice wave-like function, just like that, and all the little particles in front of it were glowing a little bit, pushing back, but nobody was in doing anything really serious. All of a sudden, this Venturi is an accelerator. It's called an atomizer. Well, an atomizer makes gas literally atomize, basically, turn into its molecular components. This is actually making the light turn into its light components, which is only those two particles, the muon and the electron neutrino attached together. And back to back, they make up the photons, and the photons split up here. That's fission. When it breaks, it's fission. I don't care what anybody says. And all we had coming through here was the white stuff, electron showers. They came back together here, and they recreated as Higgs fields. And all of this has been shown over and over and over. And here's the particles that we split apart. And these are the ones that Fermi Lab says are the particles they're looking for. Well, I see no reason to think. And this was back, oh, 2015, I put this light is dark energy and matter in the vacuum of space. Because light comes from the sun, obviously. It's everywhere. It saturates it. And Fermi Lab, the same time, 2013, Don Lincoln again is the guy that put out the article saying, it's quantum foam. You can look it up. This one was called What's the Point? And the other one was called Quantum Foam from Fermilab, Don Lincoln. You see that? That's a single disk slit. That is spinning light, and that's why it creates these interference patterns. It's because they push to shove, push to shove, push to shove as they come spinning through. That is a drill bit. If you were a machinist, you would understand that. Now, this is critical you don't go any further until you understand what you're looking at here. This is nothing more than pulsed red laser. Pulse, 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 leading pulse. That's why this is so illuminated. The most forward pulse is pushing against all of these particles that are in the air, which are gases and they have electron configurations to them because everything's made of electrons. But in addition, there's temperature. 
and those are free electrons. So these are the little particles that are out here sort of just drifting around. They were all fine. And all of a sudden, this came through here. Let's say this side's coming forward. It's pushing anything that has one of these facing it. This glows. This glows more because the pusher always glows more. And this is the pusher. Now, the red will start to charge up the leading, and then it will flip. And then the lower red will start to concuss. And that's called the muon wobble. And which is nothing more than the photon wobble. And the, all of these particles are nothing more than pushers. You know, well, shovers, actually. These are the pushers. I always say the most important one that's making the most impact is the pusher. So this is light. It's pushing against these passive particles. They were happy doing nothing in the air. They were fine. They wouldn't be glowing like that unless we were pushing against them. All right. What I want you to concentrate on here is that red disc. Pulse, 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 pulse. And you see they're fairly well separated. And then all of a sudden what happens here? Remember I talked about that particle, which was a black and white one right about there. All of a sudden, it starts to glow like crazy. But only right in this one spot. It's only right here, right exactly straight into that venturi. Only there. They're all over the place. You see them here, 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 here? We don't see them because they're not concussing hard enough. The only reason we see these is because of the reverse concussion from this explosion. That's what's lighting these up. They're here. And they're up here in this darkness, too. You just don't see them. And the only reason you see this is because it's so illuminated. It's giving off enormous amounts of radiance because of this particular interaction. And it's exact, exact, exact slit. If it's not hitting here, it's just sort of floating by and doing what it does. But when it explodes here, they become apparent. They are obviously here. And all of these particles are additionally glowing like crazy over here. Originally they were only glowing right in front of this. Now they're glowing from the reverse explosion. This is an absolutely enormous increase in energy. And right here is where the Higgs fields begin to reappear. Here there's just nothing but raw energy. All you can see is a little white zit, 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 zit. And all of a sudden you see these fields show up. And guess what? We caught one that I think is a reverse spinner. Now check this out. There's some anomalies here and I can't exactly tell you why. Because this was, again, this is Rod Warren did this absolutely fabulous job. I cannot thank him enough. He worked with me, still working with me today for seven, eight, nine years. I don't know what it's a long time. Now, this is the Venturi coming straight at us. All right. So from here, to where you see these Higgs fields start to reappear. It's nothing but raw whiteness. What we need to do is harvest it before it creates these fields, run it through our devices, and then let it re recreate a field somewhere in a sink. Now, let me show you something else. All right, this is all coming from the exact same frequency of light, red light, coming through this venture. All of a sudden, we get purple and we get orange. You know, a little. This is energetic. This is stretched, and I can, we can see it in other shots. It is elongated because the field is crushed. You see it, and it turns color. It's turned a brighter color. Now, you see that one. That is the most interesting one of all. You see how it's spinning like backwards. That's what I'm taking. The other ones I believe are spinning forward. And when I say that. There's a, something that's called the right-hand rule. Light is supposed to spin to the right if it's going that way. I think this one's spinning to the left, and I understand what it would do. It would gather its field into itself, and I think that's what happened. And then it crashed into another field and created this. All right, you see that? I think that's that little white particle, and it interacted with another field doing that. <laughs> Whatever that is, I don't know. That's the only time I've ever seen it. But it's making like a shadow field over top of another field. It looks like it's impacting. It seemed to have some shape and structure. We saw it spinning, I believe, backwards. 
Uh, that's what I can tell you. Okay, I, I probably showed you the red and green, or I will. But this is blue coming in out of the venturi, very hot. You see, you, can, you can't even make out there's two particles here. But as it starts to spin and lose speed, it starts to twist to the left. And by the time it gets to the end of the shot, you can see that there's two particles attached together. But they're spinning so fast, you can't see the blacks. That's all I can tell you. But I know the, the green and the red are identical, so that's all I can tell you. Here's the, here's the red ones as they, as they progress towards the venture. Right? You see up here, you see absolutely nothing. There's no particles there at all. But here they are coming, and they're hitting right into the venture over here. It's extremely magnified. Here you don't have any real structure to them. Then all of a sudden they start to box up. And then they spike up at the top and bottom. And then you can see this one was trailing back. These are the same particles. It takes a whole batch at one time. It's just zip, and the whole thing comes up because it all happens so fast. Now, this is in the back, and now it's in the front. And that's called a muon wobble. As it charges up, that one will flip. Well, instead, it hit the venturi, and they split apart into the blacks and whites. And you can't tell me there's any better particle than that right there. I mean, you can see what it is. Now, if I could show you green was exactly the same, you would maybe think I was right. I would hope. And guess what? There's green. They don't need to get any greener than that, and they don't get any more perfect than that. That is a green photon. Now, here it is getting made. I show you the red one's getting made. Here's the green getting made. Zoop! And all of a sudden, there it is. Now, it's getting ready to flip. You see how the, this one here is starting to glow real lot and it's getting fuzzy? It's going to flip and then this one will go to the back and that one will go to the front to charge it up again. And that's what they do. That's the muon wobble. Now here's another really cool shot Rod did. This is the blue, la <coughs> the blue laser. Remember it comes in. Now, what is it coming into? I'm pretty sure this was glass. And this, you can see, there's a little bump there, a little, you know, like a bullet coming through here, just bumping it up. And there it is coming out the other end. And this is the, the most forward-leading one will have the most concussion. Now, you see there's a black stripe, the bigger, 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 tighter, 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 Well, it's slowing down. Basically, it's hitting and hitting and hitting and hitting and hitting. And that's, there'll be more of a push-to-shove zone between because there's not as much impact. All right, this is really cool, and it's very, very nice to show because it, it demonstrates everything in so much detail. Here's your very powerful green coming through the same slit as the not-so-powerful red. It actually just pushes it out of the way, get the hell out of the way, and it streams past it so fast, it turns it into little circles, little barrel loops. You see them? <laughs> see what they look like? Their particles twisted into a little barrel loop. They're not supposed to go like that. They're supposed to stay straight up and down with the axis of the earth, like over here, you see? They call it upspin and downspin. Sometimes the black particle on this side is up, sometimes the black particle on that side is down. It doesn't matter. It's the same particle, and they're not supposed to barrel loop like that. And the only reason it is because light is bumping into other light. And I saw another channel the other day that can light bump into other light. Yes, it can. All right, this just came out like two days ago. They just say they discovered the Higgs axial boson, which is what I've just been showing you. And this is MIT, and they're saying, oh, it's a, they've figured out the, how to make this new particle. On a desktop, same thing we did. All right, this is what I'm proposing. Somebody should, in this energy department, should at least look into this. Lasers are a dime a dozen. The Venturi is just nothing more than two pins made out of some kind of metal close enough so that they restrict and only allow the white to get through, keeping the black particles away, as I showed you. Then you put a harvester in right here to pick up on whatever energy you can extract from this whiteness. Run it through until it gets back to the black particles, which would be floating back in here somewhere. You have to get the white through the, through the load before you can get it back. Then you tap off a little piece of this to keep the laser going, and that's what's called free energy. 